The Cool Contraption Guy with Tom Fox, workshop editor for Boys Quest and Fun for Kids magazines, presents Solderless Breadboard in Electrical Engineer's Lego. A solderless breadboard reminds me of Lego building blocks. Both are well made and you can do a lot of neat things with them. Here is a small breadboard that I use in many of my projects mentioned on my Cool Contraption Guy YouTube video channel. These boards are inexpensive to use. For instance, the breadboard shown in this video costs less than six bucks and can be used over and over again to make hundreds of different circuits. Unless you take a real good look at these boards or pull off their backing, all you will see is white plastic with rows and columns of holes. While these breadboards look like they are made solely of plastic, the plastic actually holds networks of tin plated phosphor bronze or nickel silver alloy spring clips. The wires and leads are pushed in these clips to make connections. Here you see I pull a bit of backing back so you can take a peek at these clips in back. Notice that these boards are made so it is easy to figure out which holes are connected electrically. These numbered columns of five holes each are connected together. With this board, these 25 holes in these bottom rows are connected together, as are the 25 holes in these top rows. They're also connected together. These long rows are often used to connect the board to the power source. Often, wire strippers are used to do this job to make the strip the ends. But unless you get your hands on a good one, which aren't cheap, there is another way of doing this. And it works actually better. First you take a pair of long nose pliers and squeeze the insulation at both ends. Well, here we'll just sew this at the end. Squeeze it so it smushes it. Then you take diagonal cutters and just pull it off. Like that. To show how to wire components in the circuit, we would demonstrate how to hook up a LED. Notice LEDs are, unlike regular light bulbs, are polarized. They have a cathode and an anode. That, that where the pencil is pointing to is a cathode because it has a little flat mark and uh, it's a shorter lead. We then hook up our battery. Now we will then put the short lead of the LED, which is a cathode, in the bottom row. We will then later that'll be connected to the black lead of the battery connector which is the negative terminal. We are now done with the circuit so we can pull the parts out and start another project right on the same board. Dip ICs work perfectly with a solid breadboard, however, they sometimes come with the pins bent out a little bit, so we have to straighten them up before they can be used here. The pins of the dip ICs are numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Notice how fast you can wire these circuits if you have nimble fingers and you know exactly what you are doing. It's really something. Now I will work even faster. I'm done. I made a circuit to flash my LED at 1.5 hertz. Now that we tested out that circuit, we can have fun wiring up a new circuit. <laughs> 